my wife's a drill sergeant. She she's tough. She don't mess. You know, she's this this big. But like, so you're you know, the softy in the family. I'm just well, kidding. yeah, it's no, you know, it's funny because my my son said it to me. My son's 21 now. He's a good kid, you know. And uh, he says to me, back when he's like 12, he goes, Dad, I don't want you to be offended but i'm really scared of mom i'm not really that scared of you and you know like i i yeah. cracked up because it's true that she's got to step she's got to stand on like a milk crate to reach him because you know <laughs> she's tiny and he's tall but it's true but you know but she was hard but fair but loved that's see this is the thing you take any child anywhere from any background if you love them you nurture them you teach them and you guide them you have a successful adult and see that's the problem in our society it's not judgmental i'm not judging anyone but we need to try harder as parents as as siblings as friends but especially when when we're blessed with a child it's like you you got to put that child first it's it's like being a military person or responder it's not about you anymore now it's the team so that little child is is now the team and you know your wife or your your significant other you know like it's not about you anymore and see that's the problem is people have a hard time not making it about them you know like now it's really weird my, my kids are 19 21 and 24 and they hardly want to hang with me because they're busy in their life we love each other they're probably tired of hearing me go on and you know preach and whatever but like but but they're adults we 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 did pretty much the crux of what we had to do to to put them into adulthood and I look back and I go, wow, I wish I didn't work so much. And I wish, but then I say, no, but it was okay. You know, my wife stayed home, good lessons, good, you know, just, just. But like, ultimately, like you said, it's love. It is. It, it's, love. it's the common, that love is the most important ingredient on this earth. And, that, and that's, the, that's the problem what's going on right now. Like take politics out of it right take polarizing each other against each other take all that crap out of it and just airdrop a bunch of love right <laughs> right like yeah. I, I, I like I, I when i worked on rescue me right yeah i love those people so much they were such great we had such a great crew and they worked so hard you're a celebrity no 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 not at all I, if, <laughs> if i was I, it didn't really it didn't really work out so good i went, yeah. went on to being a stagehand that way no <laughs> I'm not pretty, but uh, <laughs> and they don't, they don't want old guys with waving waving bye bye hairdos. But yeah. uh, but but it was funny. We the crew we became really tight. We had like shoot like 80, 90 people on a on a set, right? And you know, the first few episodes, everybody's trying to feel each other out because you know you work with different crews, different people. And this is going back starting in two thousand and four. So it was a different time, and I love to hug people because mm -hmm. to me a hug is a true expression of love and caring. You may not know a person a long time, but you say, I care about you with a hug. Can I, can I do yeah. just a tiny tangent? Uh, yeah. This was in the midst of COVID when uh, I was in Boston and it was, you know, masks, like triple masks, nobody. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I, I went to see Joe here when he's trying to convince me to move to Austin, Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. And then when the first time I see him, he's like, ah, you motherfucking <laughs> big ass hug. Yeah. And it and people, felt so well, people good. People probably looked horrified. They're hugging. Well, no, it was they're just, hugging. Well, yeah. it was just him. Oh, just okay, him no, I'm and saying, I. but if you do it in public now, it's like it's like you committed a but crime. But that expression, because I was so, you forget how, oh, yeah. how powerful that is. That oh, I got just, some of my buddies. I give them a huge, a huge hug and a big sloppy kiss on their cheek. And I, I mean, and I, cause I love them. They, yeah. these are my brothers, you know, but on this set, I swear to God, it got to the point and I'm not trying to whatever, but there was people that would come up to me for the daily hug. Yeah. And I said, <laughs> what, what are you doing? And they said, come on, bring it in. And I give them the hug. And they said, you don't understand. It just makes me feel so good. You, yeah, yeah. It makes me feel like you give a crap about my side. I really do. Awesome. I said, but it, it touched my heart that people were seeking me out to get that hug to start the day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember there was a guy in Manhattan. He was selling hugs for like 50 cents. And I think he got arrested, right? It was be just before COVID. But like, I wouldn't sell them. If, yeah, but now, you're giving them away for Well, now free. I got leukemia. I'd be kind of concerned to get into COVID. I mean, yeah. but- but like I, I really think we need that. We need hugging booths, like in each city or each town, like because there's so many people that just want to know someone gives a shit about them, and that's the problem. It's like, like you know, that's what I love about small little towns, like where I am now in Tennessee. 
and I'm not knocking New York, I'm not knocking big towns, but I guess it's easier to do in a smaller area because it's just not this massive humanity. But they'll stop and check on you. Like you're out in the road and, you know, like I'm cutting and cleaning or whatever. I, occasionally I'll roll a lawnmower or a tractor into a ditch because I'm, you know, not a farmer too good. But uh, <laughs> it's easier to drive a fire truck in New York. But they literally, oh, I was worried. I haven't seen you. And I'm like, no, no, I'm okay. But they literally like check on you. They're worried about you. And, and I'm going, these people hardly know me, but yet they're so caring. And and that's the problem. Like this is what I love about my life. I spent a lot of time, as a, especially as a young boy, and a lot of time in Ireland at my grandma's farm. And my mom comes from this tiny, tiny little village. She's out in the middle of nowhere. And and the, the childhood home she grew up in, still my aunt and uncle live in it still. I just love it there so much because everyone waves. Tennessee's similar. They wave. Driving by and you're like, who the hell's that? I just wave, you know. Mm-hmm. But my cousin will point it out. Actually, oh, third cousin, second removed by you know Johnny. I was like, holy shoot, I'm related to everyone here, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But like, everyone stops to say hello yeah. and how are you? And I have a problem doing that because my wife goes, people think you're crazy. Why are you talking to everybody? I said, like, I'll literally stop someone and and say, how's your day going? Like, yeah. I mean, I'll randomly on the sidewalk. Then it looks a little nuts. But like, if I'm buying a cup of coffee. Oh, that happens here in yeah. Austin all the time. Yeah. That's why I love it here. On yeah. the sidewalk randomly. Yeah, no, it's it's just so nice. They, they they'll say hi to me. I thought they recognized me or something. Right. I don't give a shit who you are. They're just being nice. <laughs>